Welcome to Somerset Showcase. Uh, today we are going to talk with some members of a committee that has been revitalized recently. The Economic Development Committee was not active for a few years, but it's got all new members now and they've been working really hard dur during the past year to get it going again and work on some different initiatives in town. Uh, we're here with Paul Cogley, uh, the chairman of the Economic Development Committee, and Richard Ritchie. Uh, so, welcome. Well, thank you very much, George. And nice to be here. Thank, thank you, George. I know you've been doing a lot of work, and we're going to talk about some of that today. Terrific. Uh, so, first of all, can you tell me what the mission is of the Economic Development Committee and, and what you do? I sure can, and I think the uh, it's interesting, people may not realize uh, what our focus is. They certainly can see it on the town uh, website, on the economic development page. We also have a Facebook page where uh, you can go to and, and see it. But there, here's, here's the essence of what we, uh, what we have responsible for. We're responsible uh, for looking out for the businesses that exist in town and trying to support them in any number of ways and we're going to talk about a couple of things that we're doing in that regard. We're certainly also interested in attracting new business to the town so that we can increase of the tax base uh, that we have in Somerset. Uh, but another important part that people don't uh, necessarily think about is the quality of life and pride of community. And that's part of our mission as well, to, uh, to look at things that will enhance the quality of life, um, pride in the community so that companies would want to relocate here so that uh, families would, we, would want to uh, relocate here as well. And some of the things that we're going to talk about today are going to address those, uh, address those parts of our mission statement directly. Okay. Uh, so you, you said that uh, Richard um, is going to talk a little bit about what you're doing to help existing businesses. Can you tell me a little bit about that? You, you... Okay. Well. Um... What we've done so far, and as Paul said, really, it's a, our role is in supporting the community in both, you know, we use private industry terms, internal and external growth. So right now we're looking to get that going through engagement and communication. So in April we did a direct mailing to all of the businesses in town, which are both businesses with physical locations as well as home-based businesses. Um, honestly, the response was a little underwhelming on that. Um, so we're looking at how else we can reach out to these people um, and get that um, rolling a little bit more. You know, we've um, at last town meeting we did get funds approved, you know, for a new website, uh, website development, which we're looking forward to. You know, we intend to um, do a few things with that as far as doing an enhanced business directory. You know, as I'm sure you've seen on um, social media, a lot of people always have questions. Oh, where do I go for this? Where do I go for that? And in most cases, there are resources and sometimes multiple resources right in town. You know, keep the business local and people just aren't aware of it and they don't know where to go to look for it. So, you know, I hope, at least thankfully they're going on social media and people are directing them to this. But I think we can do a really nice modern business directory and help. Um, as well as a calendar events and we want to do that. We want to get some people that are admins. They can actually post what they have right on there just for the then approval and we put that uh, you know right into the calendar so people know more what's going on um, we've worked on a recognition program you know something that Lauren had asked for and we looked into and we already have a recognition program in effect now where we uh, one uh, my follow up with Kelly uh, Parenti I uh, owe her a call for this month actually uh, where she makes us aware monthly of the new businesses you know the selectmen then take that information they go out if the business desires it, they're doing a ribbon cutting and as you know you cover it. Yeah. Um, we're recognizing anniversaries, um, so we're, right now we're doing it at 10 year intervals. Um, so right now in the probably one of the upcoming selections meeting they'll be addressing that. Uh, you know we've got a few right now, Stripe Gymnastics at 10 years, Wave 1 at 20 which I believe you wrote something on, yeah. um, Benaric Boots 20 years and Wilbur Liquors, uh, out of sight out of mind, but they're at 40 years right now this month, 40 years for them uh, in that location. And uh, you know we're looking to enhance that further. So right now one of the other things um, is um, a series of annual awards. And we'll get into that a little later in the discussion on how to do it, but there are um, several good categories, you know, community, gem, best neighbor, neighbor, and so forth. 
and we want to get the community involved in that, let them vote on these things. And uh, you know, something that um, I think Paul will be getting into, but we're going to have a um, table set up some of the events in town. And as we get later in the year, possibly Spirit of Somerset not decided yet, we'll do some, have an opportunity for them to vote on who they believe these awards should be presented to. Yeah. We've done some other things too with respect to the existing businesses in town. Uh, we've had visits uh, for the committee uh, to several places. We've been to Horner to see uh, all of the activities that are going over there, which would surprise anyone who's uh, never been in there because it, there is a multitude of activity uh, and uh, you just wouldn't believe how busy they are. Uh, if I have my numbers right, and Peter will chastise me if I get this wrong, but I think they, are, they put out the equivalent of about 5,000 doors a week coming out of that uh, out of that plant and they do everything from uh, doors and windows to specially custom stairs and stairwells it's not the only location they have they also have locations I believe down in Tennessee so it's uh, it's quite a business uh, and we got a chance to talk to them as a committee hear what uh, uh, what they were doing um, they also have uh, some plans for further expansion that they would like to do. Nothing concrete yet at this point, but there's certainly, uh, uh, it's an opportunity for them. We also took a tour um, of uh, solar uh, therapeutics to see their facility, and uh, that was uh, an excellent tour as well. It's amazing to see the technology that's involved in, in the products that they uh, produce and, and the same thing they were already in the process of expanding some of the facility uh, that they have there and they talked about other future plans so there's uh, those are the two that we've done so far we have a couple of others that have been scheduled uh, Jeff Marks was going to be here to talk about these but unfortunately he, had, he was called away this morning um, we're going to be visiting Clifton um, uh, Piers, uh, Pearson's Pilings is another business that we're going to, and we have some others that uh, that we're planning because we want to get a good feel for the existing businesses that we uh, we have in town, and I think uh, I think that's important for us to be able to do that. How many members do you have on the Economic Development Committee, and and what are some of their backgrounds? Well, that's a really good question. Let me count them. So we have myself, we have Rick, we have. Uh, Jeff Marks, um, we have Tom Richardson, uh, we have uh, uh, um, the two Pat McDonald, Dottie and Dick Eau Claire, and Amy, uh, uh, Amy Rigtrup, and Allison. And Al that's right, Allison uh, is also a member of the committee. Uh, she's on a sabbatical right now because of her, her son just graduated from school, is going off to college, but she's coming back. Um, in uh, September, so and and Rod Fortier, so we have a, a kind of a wide diversity in terms of experience. You know, I come from a corporate background, um, uh, and, and uh, familiar with uh, uh, business, business finance, if you will, that kind of thing. Rick also comes out of a business background, a corporate background. Mm -hmm. um, Jeff, as you know, has a printing company over uh, in Fall River active in many things that go on in the community, Winterfest, etc. Uh, Allison with, uh, with uh, Soham and the activities that she's involved in. Amy is part of a local business as well. Uh, and uh, as is Rod, a long, long standing uh, uh, boat manufacturing business. And uh, Pat, who is uh, an attorney. Uh, and who did I miss in all of that? Did I miss somebody oh, on their okay. background? The Oh, and of course, Dick and Dottie Eau Claire. With, <laughs> everybody with knows them. Everybody knows them, and everybody and, knows uh, Eau Claire's market. And Tom, is triangle. and Tom Richardson Triangle Refrigeration over in uh, Fall River. So uh, a, a, a nice, diverse background, I think, of folks that, uh, um, that each contribute to what we're doing on the committee. So what do we have to do to attract good businesses to town? Well, that's a really good question. Uh, I think, first of all, we need to provide an attractive environment. Uh, we are a small town, so in many ways we can't compete with the likes of uh, uh, New Bedford or uh, Fall River uh, and uh, some of the other uh, larger surrounding communities. But 
Somerset, I believe, is, is a town that has a, a, a well-diversified workforce, um, has uh, locations where we can expand, where economic development can take place in terms of uh, bringing, uh, bringing new businesses in. We have room for growth. It's not an easy task, George. And I, one of the things I did when I first accepted the job uh, as the chairman of the committee, I looked to see what was going on in other, other, other areas, other parts of the country, et cetera. And, you know, there, it takes four years to bring a small business into a town like Somerset. You just don't attract it overnight. And to attract a large business like Prismian, we're very fortunate Prismian is going to be coming to town. That's a 100-year event, George. A town like us, it would, you, you have that opportunity once in 100 years. So it's a, it's a challenge. Uh, each of us are, are constantly hearing of things. When we get together at committee meetings, we talk about uh, opportunities to come up. People will reach out to various members of the committee or the selectmen who pass information on to us um, in queries. We have connections with the, uh, the folks at, at uh, Mass Development as well who reach out to us when there are uh, potential inquiries. So there's a, a, a lot of ways that we can network to get, um, to get information, but it takes time to bring uh, new business or new activity to your town. And so I will say, I won't, I won't take any credit for Prismian from an Economic Development Committee standpoint. We didn't have very, we had literally nothing to do with it, but the biggest task that we had as a committee has already been taken care of for us, and that's bringing that one in a hundred year event into town. Uh, well, what do you think some of the town's assets are that would be good to bring businesses into town? Uh, I mean, we're right off the highway. We got water and sewer, things like that. Absolutely, we have a we have a good lo we have a very good location with uh, access to the interstate highways. We do have city water, city sewer, so we're you know we have that to bring to the table. We certainly uh, have. Uh, uh, a water plant that's capable of producing plenty of water now that the the uh, um, you know the power plants have shut down um, and we have locations too George and we'll talk about that a little bit more but there's some there's some areas in town that I think we can uh, look to um, if uh, if companies were interested in coming in I also think you know um, our school system is uh, certainly something that's uh, an attraction in terms of both uh, physical plant, what we have, what we're talking about, the quality of our education, the teachers th that we have, uh, and I believe the support from the town, certainly from the Board of Selectmen uh, uh, and other committees, uh, whether it's planning or Board of Health, conservation uh, or zoning, uh, I think everyone tries to work together uh, to, um, to make it the processes smooth and easy and to bring businesses into town. So I do, th and along with that, I know that we were talking about the new middle school, a lot of things uh, uh, in, in play with respect to it, but quite frankly, it's part of what makes things desirable or attractive in a town like Somerset, to have a new high school, to have a new middle school, and to have the quality of teachers that we have. Now you, we have several town-owned properties that I know you've been starting to discuss as far as what can be done with them, the, the biggest of which is the Wilbur Avenue land. Right. Um, well, let me talk about the properties and, and kind of the priority that we've established from an economic development standpoint. The first property, actually, that we're, that we're focused on is that area of land that's located behind Pink Bean. Uh, many of the people watching this will probably remember that uh, at, a, at a town meeting a couple of years ago, we actually voted to declare that land surplus. Uh, the primary uh, interest at that point was uh, Pink Bean was interested in a small portion of that property uh, to, to expand what they were doing. Um, so uh, at that time, there was some work done uh, to look at, at that piece of property, but it was only a portion, it wasn't complete. Alan Smith asked me to take another look at it, um, and what we have in process right now is a, a request that we've sent out 
to multiple uh, appraisers, real estate appraisers, to evaluate that whole piece of property, not just a little portion. It's a, it, it's a sm small, small portion of land that's landlocked, but once again, uh, we went to the town, uh, the town said yes, we understand, we declared a surplus, but nothing has happened yet. So we're intent, we're intent on the follow-up and the follow-through. I would hope to have that land appraised within the next 30 days, and from there uh, we'll proceed to uh, see what we can do with it with respect to Pink Bean or the other businesses that are located uh, in that same area as well, because it is a landlocked piece of property. There is no road access. Uh, to that piece of property currently, and I don't think that road access could be uh, uh, could be made. So it might work for expansions of, of those existing businesses. That's number one. Number two will be the property up on County at County and Palmer, the old gas station, which was foreclosed on the town took title of that property. It's been under remediation. Uh, there is a bit of work left to do, but as soon as that is done, uh, that's another piece of property that we will go to uh, the citizens and ask them to declare its surplus. Uh, I would hope to have that uh, one uh, December, if we have a December special meeting, to have that property uh, identified. And then in the Slaves Ferry area, there are a number of things that are, are going on in, in the Slaves Ferry area. First of all, um, we've been working with the state uh, they would. Uh, the state has proposed putting a fishing pier in. Now this won't be where the old bridge is that's coming down, but it's a, it's a piece of property that the town owns that's just to the right of Grace Church. Um, the state has already done a, a study uh, of what it would look like. This has been in presentations that I've given before. Um, they have given us a draft of a, of a, it's called a land management agreement, where they would come in um, and build the facility. What I'm un not clear about at this, you know, as of this point in time at 1130 in the morning on this day is whether or not the state has funded it. They were going to try to get the funding for it into the 2023 bill. I just don't know if there was. But what was provided in the 2023 bill was funds, $75,000, for a uh, um, third-party consultant, a uh, planning consultant, to come in and help us look at the revitalization of the, of the uh, uh, Slaves Ferry area. We also have an informal committee that's been talking, this is not part of the Economic Development Committee, but an informal group of citizens who have talked about the potential for putting a mixed-use building uh, in, down in Slates Ferry, essentially where the park and ride is now. So that's not something that would happen overnight, but there's been conversations about that. I also included that in the presentation that I gave to the selectmen. So that's another priority. And then you have the property that's to the left of Grace Church, which is currently used for parking, for some events, and for other things. That potential a piece of property really has a lot of potential because it's waterside and I can see a vision where you could have the fishing pier, you could have something developed there, you could have a, a river walk that would go all the way up to, to the walkway that goes over to Fall River. I, you know, I, I can see where that would be very desirable as well. Um, and then of course we do have the Route 103 property which uh, I know I've talked about um, it's raised some questions or some controversy um, in terms of should it be developed or not be developed and certainly I get uh, I get every aspect of what people are, would consider recognize that all of these projects don't happen overnight if you were to decide to develop uh, the route 103 property the Willow Avenue property that's at least five years or more out before you would see anything going on. And I am particularly uh, aware and acutely aware that there needs to be a solution to the traffic problem before, before that can be accomplished. So the state has come in and done some studies. They looked at the rotary. They did some traffic counts. We all know about the traffic on, on Brayton Avenue, um, and we know there will be traffic from when Prismian again in about five years or so when Prismian is fully up and running. So that needs to be addressed. One of the things that I've looked at is whether or not it would be feasible to put additional 
uh, exits, if you will, out of the 103 property, perhaps on to Riverside or on to Route 6. All very preliminary in terms of looking at because it's a very desirable piece of property. But I will say this: if the town, if the townspeople, you know, come to a town, come to a town meeting to vote as to whether or not to declare that surplus and decide that they don't, they want to keep it as open space. Then I believe the town needs to develop that as a, it needs to look at developing that as a full, as a fully utilized park, not just sitting there fallow full of poison ivy and what and ticks and whatever else might be there but turn it into uh, a 60 or 70 acre park um, i grew up in a town lancaster pennsylvania where we had a park 80 acres it was called long park very similar in size um, it had a three acre pond in it uh, and an amphitheater and it was <coughs> excuse me multi-use for um, any number of things, picnic tables, uh, the amphitheater for events, the fishing pond, they would hold an annual event for a children, uh, fishing contest, uh, Qantas Club would have their annual chicken barbecue. I mean, it was really utilized. Um, and if, if the citizens of the town don't want to look at 103 as commercial development, I respect that, but then I believe we need to move forward and look at it as a true park uh, as part of the town and not let it sit there in the condition that it is now. Rick, I don't know if you wanted to add anything to the thoughts about the properties that we're uh, looking at. I think you covered it pretty well. It's, uh, you know, there are a lot of concerns about Wilbur. That's why it's well down the list right now because there's a lot of work to go into it. As Paul said, the traffic, people are concerned about open space. If you look at it, it there's always discrepancies. It's somewhere between 102 and 120 acres, depending on who you speak to, but there, there is a lot of land yeah. that is wetland, that is whatever, that's going to be preserved as open space no matter. And I think a lot of the people with negative opinion of that don't realize that you're going to still end up with 30, 40 acres when you develop that property that remains open space. Yeah. The design concepts that, uh, uh, that were done by Serpent, uh, looking at that piece of property, which again, are, uh, it was in the presentation I gave, it's up on the, our page, the Economic Development Committee page. Um, under I think it's called the June presentation of the board, uh, there were two concepts that were done that showed how that property could be developed and incorporated medical facilities and incorporated uh, um, housing for uh, elderly uh, and uh, a number of other aspects too. There were two variants. One of them at the time was estimated to bring that the development would bring in something in the range of three million dollars of additional ta uh, tax revenue to the town. So uh, there are things to look at uh, to consider that but again sensitive to everyone's concern. Uh, uh, concerns no matter what they are. Yeah, there's been so many ideas over the years yeah, for that property that have, people have suggested in town from a casino to a golf course to a minor league baseball stadium. And it's Right. The talk is nice, the action is important, and one of the things that we're focused on, we talk about all the time as committee, is you know, the talk's cheap, but let's get some things done. Okay. Um, what types of businesses would you guys like to see in town, not just on that property, but just in general? What, what types of businesses do you think would be good to bring into Somerset that would bring in tax revenue and jobs, and, but be good neighbors to the mm -hmm. town? I can talk about some of Do you want to? Uh, well, there are some that are, have been identified, some smaller ones. Paul will remember the details on it better than I. Um, at one of the SOM events earlier this year, one of the things we did, we had a table set up. And we had a questionnaire and we asked the people that came up to the table and discussed, Paul was there and discussed, um, you know, what we're doing in the committee. And the questions were, you know, what businesses would you like to see in town? And what businesses do you currently frequent that you have to leave town for because we don't have them? And I don't actually remember the detail on that. Paul will have that. Mm -hmm. A couple of the ones that were previously identified, you know, it's uh, obviously coming off the pandemic. One of the things uh, that COVID brought up how with people staying home a lot of people became pet owners that were not previously pet owners. And I don't know the availability of veterinary staff. There is a huge shortage in this town that's been identified of uh, veterinary services. Um, there's nothing at the north end of town. So you've got, so you've got Spinnaker, which is right, uh, which I brought mine to well before he passed. 
uh, but going from there up towards Dighton, there's nothing else in town. You have to get well into Dighton. I don't remember where the next one is. So I mean, there's opportunity in the north end of town or elsewhere. Uh, there's other pet related services. So I mean, you've got Camp Bowwell in Swansea. You've got nothing like that here. You have no places to do any pet boarding um, in the immediate area. So there's opportunities there. Um, you know, see people mentioned I, I did try to reach out to them without response. Uh, we don't have anything like a UPS store around here. It's another smaller business. Doesn't bring in a lot of people, but it's good for the town, you know, quality of life. I mean, right now, if you need to go to UPS, there's a small <coughs> place on Wilbur and, and Ocean Grove. But for the larger places, you've got to go into either Seekonk, Westport, or Bristol for an actual UPS store. So there's smaller things that Paul remembers better than I the other yeah, items. There, well, there's, there's some interesting things along that line, George. I wonder how many citizens know that we have high-speed fiber optic running right up Route 6 in Somerset. It, uh, I, I put a picture of this again in the presentation I gave, but it comes across in Fall River. I believe it comes up Riverside and then uh, cuts through, but come, comes out and up Route 6 all the way to Providence. And it starts actually in Cape Cod. So it's, uh, it, it is a high-speed fiber optic highway that, that we uh, really don't have any uh, connection to or utilization of in Somerset. It's one of the things on our list to reach out to the folks uh, that, uh, it's a nonprofit in, in uh, Cape Cod, I believe, uh, that, uh, that owns it. But to see what we need to do, that's something that certainly could also be very attractive to businesses. Um, you know, it would be nice if we could attract health care. That was one of the things that people talked about uh, for a more uh, serious health care, other than just a doctor's visit. Uh, there isn't anywhere in Somerset that you can go. You can't, you can't get an MRI, uh, that kind of thing in Somerset. You have to go to Fall River. Uh, or uh, some some other town. So healthcare is an area that I think is important. I do think if we could attract, I, I think there will be businesses around uh, Prismian uh, that will that will develop over time, supporting businesses uh, that uh, things may be supported by our existing uh, t you know town businesses, but also by other businesses that will be interested in coming in that will that will find that very attractive. Uh, People also talked about the fact that um, while we have a selection of restaurants in town, they would like to see more choices. They would like to see, uh, I would use the term, uh, an upscale restaurant uh, in the town. That's something that, that people expressed uh, an interest in. So there's, there are any number of things that, that we learned through the, the event that we had at Song. We're also going to have a table at Spirit of Somerset where folks can come up, and we also plan to have one at Winterfest so that people can talk to us about the things that are going on. Uh, but those are the areas that, that generally have been identified. They were identified in the master plan as well. Also, one last one I do think down uh, along along the river, we were fortunate to have Gladding Hearn and Fortier, uh, a boat building. But it would it, there could be an opportunity to do do things there as well. And I know we always talk about the old power plant that is uh, on uh, Riverside Avenue. Um, it's privately owned. Um, we, we try to keep communications open with the owners of that property to see what they're thinking. Um, but there, isn't, there really isn't anything going there, but of course we'd all be anxious to, uh, to see a repurposing of, uh, of those properties and as well. The demolition of the Brightman Street Bridge may have an impact on that, who knows? Well, I, th I, uh, I don't know if it necessarily will have an impact on, uh, on what's, uh, uh, on, for example, the old power plant. I mean, the, the demolition of the, of the, uh, of the old bridge um, certainly, well, I think it, it, it's good for a couple of things. One, still potential hazard. Um, it, do, it, it does cause a navigational impact. Um, and I believe the state, I, I don't know this for a fact, but I was told that the state was spending as much as a million dollars a year to maintain the old bridge. So that's money they didn't need to spend. The abutments are going to stay. So the town will have the opportunity to look at, look at what's there from an abutment standpoint and see if something can be developed around that. But that's not where the fishing pier is intended to go. The fishing pier, um, as I said, is right next. If that proposal 
is funded and goes through, that would be located right next to the Grace Church. There is property down there, I think a couple years ago, the highway department cleaned it out. Um, it's probably overgrown again, but that's where they're proposing a, a, a fishing pier, uh, which I think would be really nice. Now, what about Break Point and what you'd like to see there for future development? Uh, you know, I'll give, I'll give my opinion uh, of what I would like to see. I would like to see that developed in a way that's consistent with what the, the folks of the town want. And I think, they, I think folks have been clear uh, in terms of wanting clean industries down there. Uh, a business like Prismian is great. I, I, I'm convinced there will be ancillary businesses that will want to uh, associate locally there. Uh, if, uh, the example I always like to use is if you build if you build a brewery, uh, the uh, companies that manufacture the cans want to want to build a plant right next to it so that they can transport the, the cans directly over. So I I'm sure there will be opportunities like that with respect to uh, supporting uh, Prismian. But I think all of us want uh, are clear in the town that we want uh, tax producing businesses, tax revenue generating businesses, uh, we want clean businesses, we want respect for uh, the neighborhood that's down there, and, uh, and, I, and I believe we'll continue to move in that direction. Have you seen a lot of interest from businesses in the town lately? Or? Interest is interest in the town in, in terms in of businesses. Well, yeah, there you know. Operations I mean, it's it's. Our, I think it's amazing to think about some of the things that are going on in town uh, already. I mentioned before the fact that uh, uh, the uh, post office plaza has recently been purchased, and that's going to be redeveloped. Uh, I think that will be very interesting. Dr. Ro uh, Dr. Robitaille has. Uh, has acquired the old Pizza Hut building and is going to turn that into uh, a new uh, dentist practice. Uh, so I think you, you have that going on. You have uh, the renovation of uh, the building. Um, uh, let's see, uh, the, uh, where Agoros, uh, Nick from Agoros is going to come in and, and is renovating uh, the, uh, the old uh, pub, Somerset Pub. Uh, so I think you've got local businesses that are, are active and, and doing things there. And there are any number of other businesses. Uh, Rick, the, uh, I forget the name, but the small, the small business that came in, uh, was it Lynn's, Lynette's? Oh, uh, Lynn's Place. Lynn's instance, Place. She, uh, George did a write up on yeah, that. Right. Yeah, so she houses. went from being a renter in the uh, building that has Vanderpool who dentistry to the right and yeah she purchased so that was a, a multi-step move so on Riverside I moved to I don't know the name of the building but the yeah uh, multi-story that created an opportunity she purchased that building did a wonderful job with it it's a you were there George I mean yeah, it looks really spirit nice. no it's nice. it's very very not well done very tasteful right and yeah and we have and we have st. Michael's building a new uh, a, a new uh, a bank or a new uh, um, uh, yeah, new new bank building um, on uh, on County Buffington, uh, you know, under roof roof up, windows in. Mm -hmm. So they're moving ahead with that. Uh, bank Five just did uh, a major uh, renovation of uh, of their property. Uh, most of it visible to the outside in terms of they've redone the parking lot. Uh, and, and, and the like there, but they've also uh, been doing a bunch of work on the inside as well. So reconfiguring what, uh, how they utilize the space inside the building. So in, in that sense, there is, uh, I think, a lot of, a lot of activity going on uh, in town. Uh, some, a few new businesses um, that, that uh, we've had some openings for. Of course, the hotel, way delayed, but we had the, <coughs> excuse me, the grand a grand opening for the hotel. Um, we also uh, had the award ceremony uh, with the selectmen for SOM uh, for the work that uh, Allison Fonce has done with it. So I think there is a lot of that activity, but, but having said that, we do recognize there are a number of empty or vacant spaces in town, and we would, we would love to see those filled as well. 
Another topic kind of related to what you're talking about with Lynn's Place and stuff is you guys have also been talking about ways to maybe make the business zones look a little better. I, I know Dottie Auclair has been right. doing some stuff with plants and stuff. And, uh, yes. So, Downtown beautification. Downtown beautification is another aspect of, of, what, uh, of what we're looking at. And uh, Dottie and Dick um, are, uh, are spearheading that and, and we've done a number of things from a planning standpoint uh, we would and, and I can tell you some of the things that we would like to do to improve the look downtown and, and some of them are very simple we would like to we would like to and uh, I have money in my in my budget for this year to do this but we would like to put banners on uh, on poles on 138 I think you go to many towns it can be Fall River it can be Providence uh, and you see that they have banners or uh, or hanging pots, you know, uh, of, of flowers and such from the poles, uh, hanging from the poles. We can do the same thing, and we should, or uh, particularly on Route 138 and in other parts of the town as well, to uh, to provide uh, uh, just uh, something attractive to see, to be able to look at at uh, and say, oh, look what you know, look what they're doing here, what the interest in town. Uh, and uh, and things like that. We're all, we've also talked about uh, plants or or uh, um, planters, if you will. Uh, sidewalk in 138 is kind of narrow, so I'm not sure how much of that we can do. I think we could probably do hanging plants uh, before that. But it's not just the initiation of doing those things, George. Then you have to have the follow-up. If you're going to do uh, hanging plants, for example, then you've got to be able to see that they get watered, they get fertilized. Etc. I know in Providence they do that. They have, I call them the bumblebees, but they're they're folks that run around in yellow and black uh, uniforms that uh, take care of of the maintenance that's necessary. You know, having banners or signs up that would be a bit different uh, in terms of uh, uh, of what we can do. But I would like to see that done. And frankly, um, there are some there are some locations in on the Route 138 uh, in, in our downtown area there that are in need of, of dressing up, in need of improvement. I mentioned what's going to happen at, uh, with uh, the purchase of the, the post office plaza. Uh, I think we'll see that there. But there still are a couple of other locations that uh, um, are, are very dated and weathered. And I certainly would like to see improvements made. And so we have to look for ways that we can help through grants, if that's possible. Uh, we've been looking into some of that and other ways that we can in, encourage um, the uh, property owners uh, to improve the look or the appearance of the property. So those are some of the things that, that we're, we're thinking about from that standpoint. And you, you're also uh, looking at bringing some events into town that would bring people into town that could help businesses, like the most recent one was the barbecue uh -huh. uh, event that we may have next year. I'm really excited about that. I'm going to turn that over to Rick because he's uh, he's been working really hard on that and some other things. So yeah, Rick, and I'd talk like to, about some I'd like to say that I, hopefully that is not a might because um, actually we've got a date well, selected. Well, I only, we say, already that, have, I only say that because it, it hasn't, hasn't been, been approved yet. Yeah. But, uh, it's uh, um, yeah, it's. I'd like to consider it kind of unofficially approved, but yes, we will be going <laughs> through this uh, with, uh, through into a uh, select meeting to present. You know, without all the final uh, work and approval from obviously from police and fire, but much as Winterfest just did in the in last the last Leftman's meeting, same thing as preliminary. Just go in there and get the approval. Uh, but it's proceeding quickly. You know, not the not the finer points which will be developed um, over the winter because we've got time. But it's already on the websites actually for you um, know um, not the. Um, Steak Cook-Off um, Association but it does the steak portion of the event. It's already on their website, went up a few days ago. It'll be up on Kansas City Barbecue Society very shortly. The fees have been paid. Uh, it's being registered. It'll be on there, which also locks in, the, not only locks in those dates, but it makes sure that no one else in a 100 to 200 mile radius books a competing event um, for the same date. So it gives us a, a large target audience of people to pull them in, to pull the teams in. Because we're going to get teams coming here from as far as New Jersey, possibly even further, that come up and do this. And it's a very um, family-focused, giving-back type of thing. These barbecue people are a bunch of great people. 
Uh, they do a lot of good everywhere they do it, and uh, the people that will be organizing the competition portion. So it's a town event. Um, the people that are going to be organizing for us the competition portion, because they have expertise in that, uh, do it on a nonprofit type basis. The proceeds from the entry fees, net of expenses of bringing in judges and so forth, all goes to charity, and we get to choose the charity as well. Um, wonderful people. Um, and, and that was in, in the whole uh, one of the subsections. So, um, of course, speaking about the branding part, I don't know if you want to jump into that or if you want to. Yeah, well, let me just say one yeah. other thing about the about the barbecue because that's one. And there are some other things we're talking about, but the barbecue event. So people understand, this will bring in probably anywhere from 30, uh, 20 to forty. I'll say twenty to forty competitors. These are professional barbecue mm -hmm. competitors. Uh, this is uh, something that's extremely well organized. Uh, th th and they come in and they do this because they're trying to qualify for either state events or national events. Yes. And and so this is uh, this is a serious competition. Mm -hmm. And as Eric said, it'll be a, it'll be a two day event for us. The first day um, will encompass uh, things that will involve uh, the community. Uh, the second day is their professional competition where they'll certainly be able to go and watch, but you're liable to get not much mm -hmm. more than a grunt out of them because they're going to be serious about what they're doing. Because these are judged events. There will be judges yes. brought in. And there are very specific rules to all of this. So this is not an amateur thing. Yes. This is not someone that thinks they can cook great ribs uh, from their backyard. So it's, it's, as Paul said, it's a two-day event, uh, which it needs to be for the competition portion because on the, the first day, on the Saturday, which is going to be an all-encompassing, it's gonna be there for the judging portion, but that's gonna be a barbecue festival for the town. And we have a lot of events that are going to take place during that. We're going to have music, we're going to have food truck vendors, you know, barbecue type food based, as well as other foods for people that prefer something else. Cornhole competitions, we're gonna have some other children related, child related activities that we haven't settled on yet. Um, there's a kids barbecue on the Saturday, which is something that they like where the kids, and it's going to include uh, children or residents, everybody can sign up for it. What type of a food they'll prepare, it's usually a hot dog, a burger, grilled cheese sandwich, something like that, and they'll be supervised so that it's safe. But they get to compete uh, and, and for a prize on something like that. And later on in the afternoon, you'll have what's called the, the state cook-off, um, which is the state cook-off um, association. That winner automatically gets a ticket to advance to the nationals in Texas. So this is a very, very professional event. Um, you know, it'll be 20 or 30 people at least competing in the state competition, some of which compete the following day in the barbecue competition. Some don't. Some are specific to one or the other, but not both. Um, also on Saturday, while we have events going on, and we're going to have presentations to pull in the interest too. So some of the people that are interested kind of get a preview and show up the following day to see the actual competition. We're going to have people explaining how the judging takes place and the rules. We're going to have people giving some tips and some demonstrations for people that want pointers on how to prepare things a little better at home and so forth. And while we have other activities going on, the judges actually go and inspect the meats. The meat, there's a, a huge emphasis obviously on food safety. So they have to inspect the meats. The meats have to be unprepared and refrigerated at the right temperature so that everyone starts on a level playing field. They can't cook anything in advance and bring it along with them. Um, the state cook-off, actually, we've got to arrange um, where they all come from, but they all come from one place. Um, we haven't actually spoken to the Eau Claire on it. We're hoping them, but if not, it'll be some other local provider. And there's a whole procedure for how you get to select your steaks uh, as well, because they cook too. And I won't get into all the detail on that because it gets too lengthy, but. You know, the, the barbecue competition is going to be a four meat, so you're going to have chicken, they get to choose which cut, ribs, pork, which is usually pulled pork, and brisket. And again, those people accrue points going towards their totals that lets them participate in the end of year championships. We have one guy in town, Matt Pereira, who's been very successful at this. Matt is, yeah, Matt is who I reached out to on this. I had seen some things on social media that he competed in this. And actually, just from a post where Alan was at work up in New Hampshire, said, oh, I have some great food from a barbecue truck up there. And Matt commented, said, yeah, they are great. And I had been giving it thought. I reached out to him, and he's been so helpful in this. He is personal friends with the team out of Taunton that's going to be organizing the competition portion. And we're all working together to organize that part. And once we get to September, Allison will be back, and our committee will be doing the overall planning 
for the whole event, incorporating the competition on Sunday. So we'll be looking at all the logistics of it as well as all the family-friendly events that take place on the Saturday. Yeah, yeah and I, I would just end it by saying we th this is something we'll put Somerset on the map mm -hmm. in terms of barbecue competition, uh, and we hope that it will be an annual event. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the idea that we're going to do it. Uh, you know, we would like to see it be done every year. Um, and as the word gets out, it will attract people to come and see. That's good for the rest of the businesses in town uh, as well. It'll be good for food vendors who bring in, but it will also it's going to be held over at, uh, in the Slates Ferry area. So good for the businesses that are there. Uh, good for the hotel potentially for the competitors that are going to come in from out of town. So there's a there's a win-win for this, and that's why we we think it's a great opportunity to bring it to town. And we're looking at next May for that. It, the dates are on May 20th and 21st. Okay. And uh, we're praying for good weather on the 20th. The 21st, the actual competition is rain or shine. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for coming in today. All, All right. right. Well, George, thanks, thanks for having us. Great. There's a lot more that we can talk about, uh, but come and see us at the, uh, uh, the next event that we'll be at. We'll be uh, at the Spirit of Somerset. Uh, feel free to reach out uh, to any of us. Uh, contact information is on the on the town website. Uh, email address is there as well, and we'd be glad to answer any questions that citizens have. And we would love to have any input, uh, from ideas, and other things that we might be able to bring to the table. So thank you very much, George. Okay, thanks. That was Paul Cogley and Rich Ritchie from the Somerset Economic Development Committee. Hopefully they'll be bringing some businesses in town that help out with our tax base and bring in some jobs. We'll see you next time on Somerset Showcase.